Bonjour, Madame, Monsieur. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First of all, I'd like to uh, tell you how it is an honor for me to be the chairman of this meeting and to acknowledge the fact that for the first time in 46 years, Laurent Baudouin is in the room with us. But he won't be playing the role of chairman. So it is an honor uh, for me to replace him in that role. I also welcome all the participants to this annual general meeting. I also welcome the participants who are watching us on the website of Bombardier. I ask you to turn off your mobile phones and all other electronic devices right now for the duration of this meeting. I welcome you to this annual meeting of shareholders of Bombardier. I also welcome all the participants who are watching us on the website of Bombardier. I ask you to turn your mobile phones, uh, to turn off your mobile phones and all other electronic devices right now for the duration of the meeting. Notre assemblée se déroulera en Our meeting will be uh, conducted in French. A simultaneous English translation service is available. If you have not already done so, I invite you to now get a simultaneous translation device from our attendants. For those participants watching our meeting on our website, a simultaneous English translation is also available. Our meeting will be conducted in French. A simultaneous English translation service is available. If you have not already done so, I invite you to now get a simultaneous translation device from our attendant. For the participant watching our meeting on our website, a simultaneous English translation is also available. <coughs> je vous invite, je vous présente les personnes qui... I will now introduce to you those people who will be helping me out during the course of this uh, meeting. To my left, uh, Maître Daniel Desjardins, a secretary of the company. To my extreme right, Mr. Pierre Allary, senior vice president and uh, uh, a financial chief financial officer, as well as Mr. Alain Belmar, president and CEO. I will act as chairman of this meeting and Maître Desjardins as secretary. I have before me a copy of the notice of meeting and other associated uh, documents intended to the shareholders, as well as Maître Desjardins' affidavit confirming their send out. I would ask you to please uh, file these with the, the meeting's records. I would like to underscore the fact that this AGM has been called in order to deal with the specific questions that are in the notice of meeting. Mr. Steve Gilbert, as well as Madame Sonia Caviaglia, for the Computer Share Inc. Uh, investor Services will act as scrutineers at this meeting. According to the report that were uh, given before the convening of this meeting, it has been confirmed that we have the prescribed quorum with the, uh, respect to those holders of the Class A shareholders, uh, multiple votes, as well as the Class B shareholders, limited vote represented either in person or by proxy at this meeting. I would ask Maître Desjardins uh, to also file those reports to the Assembly's records. I therefore declare, declare this uh, annual shareholders meeting open. I would like to ask uh, Maître Desjardins uh, to indicate uh, some security measures at this point. If ever the alarm were to go off, the fire alarm, we will ask you to please remain calm and sitting and wait uh, for those directions to be uh, given to us by the person responsible here at the plaza. Unless you are told otherwise, we would tell you to leave uh, the room through those exits that are at either side of the room. All registered shareholder, as well as all proxy holder, will once again this year be able to uh, vote through the e-ballot system with regards to each and every one of those proposals. This will allow us to accelerate the voting process of the meeting and to present the results of the vote on the screen during the course of the meeting. In other words, there will be no vote by show of hands. I would now like to ask Maître Desjardins to go over the modalities of this e-balloting system. 
Once again, hello. As is uh, the case year after year, we're going to be working with the e balloting. So, all those of you who uh, have the necessary uh, proxies, etc., uh, you will notice that we gave you a portable uh, system as well as a smart card, a personalized smart, smart card, including all of the relevant information having to do with uh, your rights with regards to the e balloting. You'll notice that the arrows at the bottom of the card are facing you and that the, these be inserted into the device up until the red light. A welcoming message should be posted on the screen. In the past, we led a test uh, and we uh, asked uh, uh, bogus uh, questions. Are Canadians going to be winning the Stanley Cup? And given the situation, we've decided not to ask such a bogus question this year. If you have uh, several accounts, the card that was given to you has all the relevant information uh, for all of your accounts. So, after, so here are all the pr presentations. Elections on the directors of Bombardier. Uh, the nomination of Ernst and Young as auditors, the adoption of uh, the non-binding advisory resolution on uh, uh, Bombardier's uh, senior management compensation plan. So you can press on buttons one, two, three in order to indicate your preference. When it will be time to vote, you will have the question that you have to vote on, and you would have to either vote for, against, or in abstention. In order to vote, you'll have to press on the appropriate button, depending on the proposal that is submitted to you at the time. Once you will have voted, the word received will be posted on the screen to indicate that the, your vote has been counted. If you want to change votes, you'll once again have to press the appropriate button, reflecting your new choice. The last button on which you're going to have to, you will have to press on, will be the one that will be accepted by the system. The, the votes uh, taken in by the shareholders or uh, proxy holders uh, uh, be uh, eligible or admissible, they will be taken into account and all of this will be immediately taken into account and accounted for at the moment of uh, the proposal. If you have already voted, you do not have to vote once again because uh, your vote was already entered in uh, so far. I now submit to you uh, the consolidated financial statements for Bombardier uh, for uh, the year ending 31st of December 2004, the independent audit auditor's report on the financial statements as well as the annual financial reports to the shareholders. Nevertheless, as these documents have been sent to the company's shareholders pursuant to, to the Act's provisions, I dispense a Maître Desjardins uh, from reading them. I will nevertheless ask him to file um, uh, such documents uh, to the meeting's records. We will now move on to the election of uh, Bombardier's directors. Uh, Bombardier's managers, management uh, suggests that you elect 14 directors. You were able to uh, read on pages 9 to 22 of the 2015 circular of a short bio and other pertinent information on each and every one of those directors. Mr. Heinrich Weiss will be leaving the board today, a board that he joined in 2005. On his name and as well and on, on behalf of all of his colleagues on the board, I would like to thank him for his uh, highly esteemed collaboration. Can I now have a proposal for the election of those 14 candidates? Mr. Chairman, my name is Emmanuel Lepin and I am Bombardier shareholder. I propose that each of those 14 following individuals be elected as directors on Bombardier's board up until the next shareholders meeting of the company or up until the election or the nomination of a successor. Laurent Baudouin, Pierre Baudouin, Alain Belmar, Joanne Bissonnette, J.R. André Bombardier, Martha Finbrooks, L. Denis Desautels, Jean-Louis Fontaine, Sheila Fraser, Daniel Johnson, Jean C. Monti, Vikram Pandit, Patrick Pichette, Carlos et Represas. Does anybody want to second this motion? Mr. Chair, my name is Sonia Ajem. I'm a Bombardier shareholder. 
I second this motion. So the motion has been proposed and seconded. We are now going to be proceeding to the e-voting. You will have to uh, vote on each one of the 14 candidates that have been suggested. I will ask Maître Desjardins to please proceed with the ballot. As Monsieur Baudouin previously mentioned, you have to vote separately for each of the 14 candidates according to those modalities that I explained to you beforehand. The name of the 14 candidates will appear on the screen behind me. Each time the name of a candidate will appear, will be posted on the screen, you will be called upon to vote either by pressing 1 if you would like to vote in favor of this candidate and button 3 if you would like to abstain from voting. So we will start with the vote. So the vote is now open for Mr. Laurent Baudouin. The vote is now closed. I will now move on to the vote for Mr. Pierre Baudouin. Thank you. The vote is now closed. The vote is now open for Monsieur Alain, Alain rather, Belmar. The vote is now closed. I'm now opening the vote for Madame Joanne Bissonnette. Thank you. The vote is now closed. Now opening the vote for Monsieur André Bombardier. The vote is now closed. The vote is now open for Madame Martha Finn Brooks. Thank you. The vote is now open for Monsieur Denis Desautels. The vote is now closed for Monsieur Desautels, and the vote is now open for Monsieur Jean-Louis Fontaine. Thank you. The vote is now closed. The vote is now open for Madame Sheila Fraser. Thank you. The vote is now closed. The vote is now open for Monsieur Daniel Johnson. The vote is closed. And the vote is now open for Monsieur Jean Monti. The vote is now closed. The vote is now open for Mr. Vikram Pandit. Thank you. The vote is now closed. The vote is now open for Mr. Patrick Pichette. Thank you. The vote is now closed. And the vote is now open for Mr. Carlos Represas. The vote is now closed. So uh, it seems to have uh, been dealt with and completed. You could see uh, the results of the ballot with respect to, to each of the 14 candidates within a few seconds behind me. So you have the results of the vote. I would like to congratulate each of the 14 directors that you have just elected. I would like to thank uh, the Board of Directors for its governance, its uh, monitoring uh, qualities exercised with great rigor. Thank you for your fine contribution and enlightened advice, which help Bombardier continue to be a leader and to keep offering sustainable mobility while offering an unequaled combination of solutions in the sector of rail and aeronautics or aerospace. Let's move to the nomination of Bombardier's independent auditors for the current fiscal year.
You also have to uh, authorize the board of directors to set their compensation. The board of directors and Bombardier's uh, senior management uh, recommend that once again you appoint Ernst and Young certified professional accountants as independent auditors for Bombardier. Their term will end at the uh, closing of the next uh, shareholder annual meeting of Bombardier. Can I have a proposal to this effect, please? Mr. Chairman, my name is Chantal Carrier, and I am one of the Bombardier shareholders. I propose first to appoint Ernst & Young, certified professional accountants as independent auditors for Bombardier for their current fiscal, and second, that their term will last until the uh, closing of the next uh, shareholder annual meeting, and third, that the board of directors be authorized to set their compensation. Does someone want to second this motion? Mr. Chair, my name is Annie-Claude Poirier, and I am a shareholder of Bombardier, and I second this motion. The uh, motion was duly uh, presented and seconded. Now you have to vote on the nomination or the appointment of Ernst & Young as Bombardier's independent auditors. I will ask Mr. Desjardins to hold the vote. Uh, the modalities are the same as the previous vote. You have to press on one if you want to vote for the appointment of Ernst & Young as Bombardier's independent auditors, or press three if you would rather abstain from voting. The vote is now open. The vote is now closed, and you will very soon see the results on the screen in a few seconds. In light of those uh, results, I'd like to congratulate Ernst and Young for the renewal of this mandate that you've given them and the trust that uh, you uh, show them. According to the agenda, now is the time for the shareholders and proxy holders to vote for or against the adoption of the non-binding resolution regarding Bombardier's approach for the compensation of the uh, executive. You can read the text of this resolution which appears on the screen behind us, or you can also read page 16 of the Management Proxy Circular 2015. As it is uh, uh, explained under Section 5 of the circular on pages 35 to 66, Bombardier's approach for the compensation of the um, senior management aims at maximizing the uh, global performance of the company by uh, promoting an appropriate uh, performance for the uh, senior management of the company. Our compensation policy um, aims at recruiting, retaining, and motivating the executive to improve the uh, performance of the company and increase the value for the shareholders, uh, which will support Bombardier's commitment in terms of uh, compensation based on performance. The uh, compensation policy for the um, senior management of Bombardier focuses on uh, overall compensation, uh, base salary, short-term and long-term incentive plans, retirement plans, and benefits. Uh, Bombardier's principle is to position its uh, global overall compensation of the members of the senior management at the median level 50th uh, percentile compared with similar positions in companies having similar international activities of the same size and complexity as Bombardier's on relevant markets. I'd like to remind you that this is an advisory resolution. The results of the vote won't be binding for Bombardier's board of directors. However, the members of the HR 
Committee and Compensation Committee will take um, your vote into account in their future review of the principle, the policies, programs, or settlements regarding the compensation of the senior management. Bombardier's Board of Directors recommends as shareholders and proxy holders that you vote for the adoption of this resolution. Before uh, voting, I would like to ask you to share uh, your comments, if you have any, with us. Yes, sir. Good morning. I am Normand Caron, and I represent this morning the Mouvement d'Education. I'm sorry, Mr. Caron, your microphone is not on. Can you move closer to the microphone? I was saying that I represent the Mouvement d'Education et de Défense des Actionnaires. And regarding this proposal, we recommend a, to, uh, voting against it not because uh, it seems uh, too much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm quite nervous. And my knees are shaking. <laughs> I am 70 years old, and it's not easy for me. So we propose uh, that Bombardier shareholders vote against this resolution, not because we believe that uh, this is too much. I think that a $17 million envelope to compensate five uh, top managers is not too much if you compare it with uh, other companies. However, 2014 was not a very good year in terms of Bombardier's performance. If you look at the past five years, um, things haven't been going that well. Of course, there were um, asset write-offs, which can be which can mitigate uh, the results, but for shareholders. It doesn't seem that this is uh, a performance that is something that could have been expected. Uh, this is why we propose that shareholders vote against this proposal. Thank you. And I'm sorry for this comments. Don't worry. Thank you very much for this comment. Are there any other comments? If there are no further comments, could I have a proposal for the uh, adoption of this uh, resolution, Mr. Chair? My name is Pierre Allard. I am a shareholder of Bombardier. I propose the adoption of this non-binding resolution regarding Bombardier's approach for the compensation of the um, executive members on page 16 of the uh, Management Proxy Circular 2015. Could a shareholder or a proxy holder second this uh, proposal? Mr. Chair, my name is Roxane Marcil. I am a shareholder of Bombardier, and I second this proposal. The proposal was duly made and seconded. I will now ask Mr. Maître Desjardins to uh, explain uh, us how to vote. I invite you to vote on the non-binding resolution regarding Bombardier's approach for the compensation of its top executives. You press 1 if you are for, you press 2 if you are against. The vote is open. The vote is now closed. And very soon you will see the result on the screen behind us. I can see that uh, the majority voted for this resolution. Motion is then carried. I will now invite our uh, CEO, Alain Belmar, 
to uh, present his uh, comments. Thank you, Pierre. It is with great pride that I stand before you today as President and Chief Executive Officer of Bombardier. Bombardier is a world-class company with an impressive portfolio of products in both aerospace and transportation. It is also a pride for Montreal, for Quebec, and for Canada. Since my arrival on February 13th, I've been very busy conducted an in-depth review of the company's operations with our teams and meeting our customers, our employees, and our investors. Although there is still much work to be done before completing the diagnosis, we are already working on implementing an action plan to guarantee Bombardier's growth. We are aware of the challenge and we are facing it with passion and determination. My first few days at Bombardier were devoted to securing our financing plan. We received a great response from the business community which allowed us to issue $868 million of equity and to borrow $2.25 billion on capital markets. The success is a tangible proof of the interest that Bombardier evokes among investors. Given the ongoing industry consolidation, we have been reviewing various strategic options for rail business as announced on February 12th. As part of our evaluation, we have decided to prepare for the initial public offering of a minority stake in Bombardier Transportation. This initiative is expected to crystallize the full value of BT and further strengthen our financial position while preserving flexibility to participate as we wish in future industry consolidation. Let me be very clear. Bombardier Transportation is not for sale. We are a world leader in the rail transportation, transportation industry, and we are adopting a proactive approach to remain in that position. At the operational level, we must improve performance and increase profitability. For this purpose, we will implement a cost-cutting program in each of our four business segments, we will promote a culture of result-oriented performance. As you may have noted, we have initiated a number of actions over the last three months. On the financial front, the results of the first quarter 2015 are generally positive. Revenues of $4.4 billion increased slightly compared to the first quarter of 2014, despite the negative impact of the exchange rate at Bombardier Transportation. Our earnings before interest and taxes and before special items rose to $237 million. Investments in our development programs have continued and our free cash flow usage has decreased to $745 million. Finally, our order backlog remains very strong at $65.8 billion despite a close to $2 billion negative impact of foreign exchange at uh, Bombardier Transportation. As it relates to foreign exchange, it should be noted that for Bombardier Transportation, the negative impact on revenues, earnings before interest and taxes, and order backlog is strictly due to the translation mainly from the euro to the US dollar. Therefore, margins as a percentage of sales remain unaffected. The success of Bombardier depends on our ability to create value for our customers and our shareholders year after year. In order to succeed, we can count on the following uh, advantages. Our state-of-the-art product portfolio, our team of passionate professionals, our impressive order backlog, and our expanding global presence. We have made progress on all those fronts and I would like to go over them with you now. Regarding Bombardier commercial aircraft, I would first like to say a few words about the C-Series program. The C-Series aircraft offer superior performance and our test results confirm that they are destined to a brilliant future. We announced today that Swiss International Airlines a subsidiary of Lufthansa will be the first airline to take delivery of the CS 
500 and operated in the first half of 2016. This is excellent news and a great vote of confidence from a world-class carrier. All our partners are working very hard to achieve our CS100 certification target by the end of 2015. Needless to say, a few risks still remain, but we have already accumulated close to 1,500 flight test hours. And we have a plan. We reached another major milestone with the maiden flight of the CS300 aircraft, which took place on February 27th. The aircraft was up in the air for nearly five hours and reached its maximum altitude of 41,000 feet. While continuing the flight test program for the C-Series aircraft, we have made significant changes to the Bombardier Commercial Aircraft Management Team. We appointed Fred Cromer as president and Colin Ball as senior VP sales. Both leaders offer in-depth knowledge of the aerospace industry and are renowned for their excellent network. We also assigned Plainview Partners, a consulting firm specializing in aviation, to support us. Our team will soon get the opportunity to meet our customers at the Paris Air Show and present the C-Series, which will be in Le Bourget for the first time along with our Q400 and CRJ aircraft. Our customers will get a chance to see the aircraft and observe its outstanding performance for the 100 to 150 seat market segment. 22 customers have already placed their trust in us by signing agreements for more than 600 C-Series aircraft. At Bombardier Business Aircraft, our resources are focused on the development of our global 7,000 and 8,000 aircraft because we predict that the market for large size aircraft will post the highest growth in the industry. These aircraft will provide our customers with a perfect balance between performance, comfort, and efficiency for long haul journeys. 2014 was also marked by the entry into service of the Challenger 350 aircraft, which boasts a new improved cabin and an extended flying range. It will be joined shortly by the Challenger 650 jet, whose entry into service is scheduled for this year. Thanks to these new aircraft, we will continue to remain a leader in the market. As leader, we innovate constantly in order to provide the best possible support to our customers around the world. In 2014, we added seven service points to our network including five in high potential emerging markets. The Bombardier aircraft owners can always count on first-class staff and facilities wherever they are. We have also appointed Peter Licoré as the new Senior Vice President of Sales for Business Aircraft. Peter has spent his entire career at Montverdi. He is passionate about our products, he knows our customers very well, and he will keep up the sales efforts with our teams. However, uh, the market has seen some softness in certain regions, particularly in Latin America, China, and Russia, which resulted in a lower order intake. Accordingly, we are planning to adjust our production rates in line with demand and the team is currently assessing the resulting impact on our workplace. In July 2014, we announced the creation of a new business segment that specializes in the design and manufacture of complex IRO structures as well as in engineering services. This new organization, which enjoys greater autonomy, will help us market our cutting-edge expertise to the aerospace industry. It will also help us optimize our cost structure and make the most of our investments in countries like Morocco as well as Mexico. On the Bombardier transportation front, two very high-speed trains have been certified since the beginning of the year. In Italy, the V300 Zafiro made its maiden journey between Milan and Rome on April 27th this year. 
Not long before, the Zafiro 380, designed to reach 380 kilometers an hour, received the go-ahead from Chinese authorities after completing 600,000 kilometers of tests. Deliveries started in the first quarter, and we see bright prospects for the future as several countries are preparing to build new high-speed train lines. Still on the topic of China, we also announced the creation of two joint ventures. The first will focus on monorail and automated people mover projects, and the second will specialize in rail control as well as signaling systems. We wish to increase our presence in these industries where there's a strong potential for growth in a context of urbanization as well as pollution control. I would also like to recall that in the beginning of 2014, we won major contracts for rail transportation solutions in Australia, England, and South Africa. Our teams are already hard at work to fulfill these contracts that will generate around $6 billion worth of revenues for Bombardier. More recently, we were chosen by UK's Essex Thameside franchise to provide maintenance for its Bombardier Electrostar trains for the next 10 years. Such success fits in perfectly with our strategy to increase the proportion of service contracts in our order backlog. As of March 31st, Bombardier's transportation order backlog added up to 29.8 billion. After three months in office, I still feel very enthused about Bombardier's potential. I've had the opportunity to visit some of our sites and meet key leaders of our different business segments. I can see that we have a solid foundation upon which to build, such as our outstanding products and brands, our global reach with customers worldwide, and dedicated and talented employees. <coughs> full of passion as well. We have challenges, this is true, but we are addressing them. Bombardier is a gem for Quebec as well as for Canada, and it is a terrific company. On a more personal note, I am proud to lead Bombardier and to be back in Montreal, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to work with our partners, our employees, and within our communities. Thank you. And I will now uh, give the floor back to Pierre. It is now our pleasure to answer your questions or to hear your comments. Please give your name clearly and tell us if you are a shareholder or a proxy holder. Good morning. I am Michel Gauthier. I'm a shareholder. I'd like to know the impact of um, putting BT on the stock exchange. What will be the impact on the EPS next year? Well, what we're announcing is that we're getting ready for a first uh, uh, IPO for BT, and it will be a minority stake that we will be offering, and we will continue uh, fully consolidating BT in our uh, results, so there will not necessarily be an impact on our earnings per share. Mr. Chair, my name is Jean Saint-Pierre. I am a shareholder of Bombardier. I have two questions for you. First, the Class B shareholder had a bad news. No, uh, we no longer have a dividend in our bank accounts. We uh, earlier on, Medak spoke about uh, the salary of uh, the senior executives and the board of directors. Uh, um, those um, compensations are maybe not too high, but they're very high. So first, why did you eliminate the um, Class B dividends? I can answer. 
first, the dividends were limited for the Class B and Class A uh, shares holders. We had a discussion with the board of directors, and we consider that for now, the cash flow is better used for uh, different purposes to uh, complete our development programs mainly. Okay. Uh, what, I'm asking you again, how can you eliminate a dividend and how can you uh, take uh, the benefits at the senior management level and at the board of directors? When I look at the board of directors, 10 assemblies, 10 meetings, the chair, Mr. Laurent Baudouin, we're talking about $600,000. Uh, those are uh, exorbitant amounts, and as a shareholder and all of those present here, I mean, if you are here, it is thanks to us. So if you cut our dividends and you um, uh, decide on those high salaries for you, there's something wrong in there. I thank you for your comment. I can assure you that we are very careful to set a competitive compensation to attract the uh, proper executives to carry out our mandates and our projects at Bombardier. I understand your disappointment. Thank you. Mr. Belmar has just explained to us that the company is a terrific company. Yes, that's true. But if you look at the shares, if you look at the uh, overall market, 98% of the people who are shareholders in different industries, well, those shares uh, were on the increase. Uh, at Bombardier, I mean, it's a very little, a minimal uh, 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 share. Uh, how come uh, those shares are not increasing two point something? How come those shares are not performing uh, better? Thanks for your question. I can tell you that we invest massively in the development of new products. It's been the case for the past year, the past years, with the Lear 85, the Global uh, 7,800, uh, and the C Series. Those projects are very complex, and uh, they are very risky. And that is not unique to Bombardier. It is the case for uh, the uh, aviation industry. Our competitors had similar problems, and because of that, there is strong pressure on the uh, financial performance of the company. In order to improve uh, our uh, sh shares and to make sure that they in increase over the coming years, first we have to focus on those programs. That is our first priority. And after that, we have to um, bring down our operation costs in order to increase our bottom line. That is our second priority. And the third priority is to work together with our teams to make sure that on the short term, we have the necessary liquidity so that our and the necessary cash flow to um, bring our major projects to fruition for C Series and our global 7,800 lines. I understand your disappointment and I understand your frustration, and that is why I said that we have a lot of challenges to take up. We recognize those challenges, but we take firm, clear, and uh, fast actions to change the situation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you recommend that we keep our shares from Bombardier? Well, this is what I'm going to tell you. Personally, I bought more shares. So you decide what you want to do. But I believe that there is a future for this company. It won't be easy. That is true. Uh, we will have ups and downs, but we know exactly where we're at. We know what are the challenges that we have to take up. We have plans to address them, and we work very hard as a team to reach our objectives. And I'm conv convinced that uh, this company has a very promising future. Thank you. You also said that Bombardier uh, transportation is not for sale, but that is not exactly what we read on the papers. Uh, they were talking about a over $5 billion sales. Are you keeping your transportation uh, division, or uh, what will happen with this division over the coming months? Well, we were pretty clear, and thank you for asking this question again. We were very clear this morning with the uh, financial analysts and the investors and with some people who are showing an interest for this division. Bombardier Transportation is not for sale. Bombardier Transport is not for sale. What we did today is that we announced a an IPO with a minority stake. That means that we're trying to do two things. 
First, we want to crystallize uh, BT's value. It is a division of Bombardier that has a, a huge value, and we want to make sure that the shareholders understand that there is a lot of value attached to this company, to this division, and that there is a promising future for this division. And the second reason is that we want to make sure that we have enough liquidity to keep on ensuring the success of this company on a mid and long term. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Good morning. I am André Segodia. I am a shareholder and I'm a long <laughs> standing shareholder. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Belmar and I have a question for you, Mr. Belmar, because you have your work cut out for you with this uh, new position. I'd like to congratulate the HR committee for having recruited you. Here's my question, Mr. Belmar. It is about your communications policy, not the one which is included in the proxy. That is just a, a cut and paste from what we uh, read in all uh, companies' um, circulars. I'm talking about the company's uh, communications policy regarding interviews, regarding uh, what we read in the papers from uh, Bombardier's sources. and. I want to refer to the C-Series and to the unfortunate incident with one of the engines. I'm sure that uh, you know what I'm referring to. I read 12 articles since uh, 2013 on that incident, and I have to say that I am very frustrated to see how it was addressed. It was addressed as if it were a minor incident at the beginning, and that had major impacts on the whole project. And I would like you to tell me if you will review your communications policy. I'm not talking about the formal policy. I want to know if you intend to uh, be more and more transparent I think that your earlier comments are an encouragement, but I would like to hear your uh, opinion. Thank you for this question. It is a very important point, communications internally and externally. There are several aspects to your question. First, I'd like to talk about the uh, flight test programs. We have to be very cautious in the way we communicate what is going on. Uh, regarding the program developments because, of course, uh, we have to think about our competitors. If you look at Boeing, Airbus, Embraer, and others, they never tell what's going on with the, the development of their programs. And we all have uh, difficult experiences when you develop such complex products with such complex um, technologies. So we have to be very careful with what we say internally and externally when we have issues with the development of our programs. Having said that, regarding uh, transparency and the importance of communications, that is something that is dear to my heart. It's very important to communicate internally on what's going on as quickly as possible. We have to communicate our priorities and we have to communicate our expectations regarding our corporation. And in this regard, we will definitely work with a lot of transparency and uh, we will be very open. Since I joined the organization, I already have visited several facilities, several of our operations. I spoke with several of our employees. And we are very open when we have to talk about our challenges and what we do to um, uh, address the situation and make sure that our organization will be successful in the long term. So there are two aspects that are important. Once again, what is going on with our program, uh, programs, and we have to be very careful because we work in an extremely competitive environment, and we have to be cautious with what we disclose to the uh, aviation community as a whole versus our internal communications. I hear you loud and clear, Monsieur Benmar, and I'm satisfied with your response. Uh, perhaps I have a suggestion I'd like to make, uh, given uh, that the communications uh, policy has to do with the audit committee, 
perhaps it would be a good idea to conduct an external analysis of uh, uh, the, commun uh, the company's communication policies in the last two years. Uh, perhaps uh, there can be improvements brought to the uh, communication policies. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for your suggestion, your recommendation. I will uh, definitely uh, take it into consideration. And I agree that there have been many uh, changes underway in the course of the last two years. And we're going to be working very hard to make sure uh, that the communication be more open with uh, our employees. And I'd like to come back to your very first comment, if I may. I would like to thank you for your vote of confidence. Uh, thank you for the vote of confidence you also uh, give to Bombardier. When I left UTC, the first person who called me was Pierre Baudouin. So a lot of the credit goes back to Pierre for my presence here and the support of the Human Resources Committee of Bombardier, as well as uh, the management team and the members of the board, the directors. Thank you. My name is Michel Karpoff. I am a shareholder. I have several questions I would like to ask you. One, is it your intention to do a joint venture, either uh, with uh, certain countries such as uh, Kuwait or uh, Qatar or even with the Chinese? Is that a possibility? In terms of the railway, the trains? Yes, yes, absolutely. And in terms of the f financing of aeronautics, because uh, it is aeronautics that's going through a hard time, that's going through the grinder. Because in terms of Bombardier Transport, uh, you're doing very well. You have a contract with the Egyptian Metro. Uh, things are really going well, uh, taking off, uh, whereas with the aeronautics, it's very difficult. But we understand our issues uh, and our priorities, and we did announce them in the month of uh, February. We're going to keep looking at um, our strategies as a whole, everything that is being offered to us. We're working on several fronts at the same time. We said that we would be focusing on transportation, which is why today we are announcing an IPO with a minority stake in Bombardier Transport. But Pierre and myself are also working very closely in order to look at all of the possibilities in all sectors, including aerospace. Uh, you spoke of Morocco. Uh, uh, how about the African market in general? What are your intentions in Morocco specifically? When I mentioned Morocco, we have uh, manufacturing activities that are launched there. So this it gives us a competitive edge from a cost uh, point of view. Uh, but in terms of Morocco, Morocco is also a client where there are opportunities, uh, whether it be with the rail or aviation, both. Monsieur Belmar, I have great trust in you. What an excellent choice uh, that uh, uh, Monsieur Baudouin made when they chose you. You're practically like the Messiah. Oh my goodness, it's too much. Uh, please. You know what? You can even ask for a raise. Uh, well, that's nice to hear, Pierre. This didn't fall into deaf ears. Well, thank you once again for your vote of conference, but it's too much. I'm just a very ordinary person, but I'm, I'm glad of what you're saying because my wife is here in the room today. Yes, be careful. You're going you're gonna to make the shares go down even more. Be careful. Well, I wish you a great deal of luck. I wish Montbardier a great deal of luck because you're one of the last flagships. We all know what happened to uh, uh, the other flagships. Uh, Montbardier represents Quebec and Canada on the international uh, scene. And uh, what a beautiful image. And we have to preserve and protect this uh, very positive image. I thank you, and I wish you really all the best. Thank you. Hello. My name is Victor Cochera, and I am um, shareholder of Bombardier. Um, I have a certain amount of reservation to approach a mic and to really express my true feelings on the share prices of Bombardier. So as a true Canadian I would, and Quebecois, I would like to place an analogy alluded earlier on on Montreal Canadiens, down 3-0, best, best of seven, and now it's game four, boys. It's time to bring your best players up front and center and to bring, um, you know, the best of you out, because this is it. I will not allude to earlier times, because there are a lot of articles coming into government intervention. I don't want to see days of Canada Air. Uh, those days are over, and you turned it around, and I 
truly believe that you can turn it around because there's a lot of families that depend, a lot of pension funds are on fixed incomes and they have invested in Bombardier. So this is a more of a comment on to bring your act together and to bring this company out of this uh, mess that it's in, meet your milestones, and bring back confidence to shareholders and bring those share prices up. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. If I may just say a few words, though, on your comment, which is uh, totally uh, appropriate and relevant. Uh, we are committed. This team is 100% committed to doing the right thing for the organization. We want Bombardier to be very successful. We understand our challenges. I don't want to minimize them, but at the same time, if you look at what we're doing, we are taking actions. We are moving forward. We're moving with speed. We're getting all the support that we need from the board. We're getting all the support that we, we, we need from our stakeholders internally and ex externally. We are bringing additional new talent. We have a lot of very good, talented people in the, the organization. It's not going to be easy. I, I, I understand that uh, your analogy with the Canadian, which I don't like right now, <laughs> but uh, I can guarantee you one thing. We're working all out right now to make Bombardier a success, and winning is the only option. Are there any other questions? No, therefore the question period is now finished. Are there any business to uh, submit to this uh, meeting? No? Well, this is now the end of this meeting. Does someone want to uh, propose the adjournment? Mr. Chair, my name is Julie Perrault. I am a shareholder of Bombardier. I propose uh, the adjournment of this uh, meeting. Does someone want to second this proposal? My name is Marie Geneviève Crepo. I am a shareholder of Bombardier, Mr. Chair, and I s second this motion. Those who are for, against, I declare this motion carried and the adjournment of this meeting. Thank you very much. Merci. <laughs> <laughs>